All right, once again, welcome and uh, glad you're joining us this afternoon for our presentation. Uh, it's kind of a seminar, webinar, uh, inspiration R, whatever you want to call it, but it's definitely something to get you excited about traveling the world. And there really isn't a better partner of ours uh, in the industry to travel on any waterway you want globally. That's true. It's uh, some partners of ours only sail on the ocean, some only sail on the river, some spe uh, specialize in expedition sailing, some are only in North America. Well, guess what? Viking Cruises is everywhere. It's all of those things, and you're going to find out why their standard of excellence is across their entire fleet. Again, from the rivers of Europe to the rivers of the Mississippi and, the, and North America, and definitely their newest product uh, is their expedition uh, experience, and you'll find out why they're special and unique. And so I'll go ahead and bring on our partner and friend, uh, Reiner Marks, uh, who is uh, a Viking Cruises employee. He's on their team. He knows this cruise line in and out. He's been with the cruise line for many years, has sailed with them many times. Uh, so we just want to welcome him. Reiner, good to see you. Good to see you, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Before I turn it over to you, I have to tease the audience here with one thing. There is a booking incentive. If you hang on to the end, Reiner's going to share with you why it's advantageous to you to book with Bon Voyage Travel your next Viking cruise. But it's not just about booking today. It's about learning and engaging. So don't think that just because we're on a webinar, this Zoom room, you can't engage with us. Uh, we're not going to turn your camera on, so don't worry about that. But you can engage with any questions or comments that you might have by going to the bottom of your Zoom box. You'll see a Q&A button as well as a chat button. Go ahead, jump in there at any point in time during the presentation, type in your question or comment, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the presentation, maybe be able to answer your question right on the spot. And if not, we'll engage with Reiner at the end and make sure every question is answered to the best of our ability for the good of the group. But I know as Reiner's going to speak to you, there's travel's personal. So you may have a lot of real specific questions that pertain to you and the experience you're looking for. That's why you need an advisor. You need an expert to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, and we have many of those at Bon Voyage. So if you don't have one, reach out to me. Type your name and, and email in the, in the chat button or the question and A, and we will connect you with a Viking Cruises expert that can work one-on-one -on -one with you. But without further ado, let's turn it over to our friend Reiner Marks. Reiner, take it away. Thank you so much, Reiner. I really appreciate it. And welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join us here today. Um, it, is, it is such a, a great thing to talk about travel again. We've been all locked up for so long in our homes, in our offices, and uh, being able to talk about this and being able to look at future travel is just wonderful. It's, it's just been way too long. So with that being said, let me tell you a little bit uh, who this guy is from Viking. My name is Rainer Marks. I used to work as a chef, as a culinary uh, professional on a number of ships. So worked for 20 years in the industry before coming to Viking and then fell in love with the product and then went from onboard operations into the sales team. And now I'm telling people how great it is to travel. So I'm a, I'm a German, uh, you know, German national. You probably hear it, the, the accent is still there, I've been told. And uh, so please feel free to ask if, if I mispronounce anything. Uh, let me know. Well, you know, I'm not offended by all means, but uh, I know the accent is still there. So with that further ado, I want to tell you a little bit about the allure of, of cruising with Viking. I love the product. Met my wife on Viking. She was actually a cruise director. So we're one of those couples. We have three little Vikings at home. So <clears throat> beyond that, Traveling, traveling on the rivers is such an amazing experience, right? And you see that uh, some of the advantages already in this first image that I'm showing you here from Budapest, you're centrally located, right? These ships are relatively small. They only hold 190 passengers. Nowadays, with, with the precautions that we have on board, it will be even less than that. So there's plenty of space to branch out. You can make it as social as you wished it to be. And most of the excursions, that we do on the rivers and even on ocean are starting right on the side of the ship. So we're docked in the heart of the heart of the town. So 
It is really, let me walk you through the, let me walk you through a typical day. You arrive on the ship, you, you board the ship, you settle into your beautiful cabin. And those are absolutely gorgeous cabins, right? Uh, state rooms from, from different sizes that vary different sizes. And here is where your travel advisor comes in very handy, really in that conversation that you have with your Bon Voyage travel advisor to let them know what are your needs, what are your wants. Those, those, this information will go very long and help your travel advisor to choose the right cabin for you and with you, right? The right location on board, they are invaluable. Um, and um, so you settle into your stateroom and uh, you're, you're pretty much your tour program starts right there on the next day with, with wonderful cities that you not only uh, float by, but dock in the heart of, right? You're starting these, these amazing excursions. And, and it's beautiful to, to think about you're getting these uh, included shore excursions. The daily shore, shore excursions are included with Viking because Viking also presents an amazing value. But in the afternoons, most of the time, we have wonderful optional tours because like Ryan uh, mentioned already, we all travel uh, with different interests. We all have different needs and different interests. So our optional tours really give you a great uh, variety of topics to learn about, whether it's art, music, culture. You might be a lover of great wines and would like to do wine tastings along the way or beer tastings, um, music. I mean, history, the topics are endless, right? And um, because we all have the same ideas and the same premises to travel, you know, it's very easy to connect with fellow travelers on board. So there is numerous great areas on board, like our beautiful Aquavit Terrace here. It's also good to know that everybody on board will speak English because we only have guests from North America, United States, Canada, Australia, and Great Britain. So everybody speaks English. So does our crew. That helps a lot. And all the communication on board will, of course, be in English as well. And... Uh, you know, our guides, uh, let me tell you a little bit about our guides in, in, those, in those ports. These are all certified uh, tour guides. Um, they have been doing that for a long time. And normally they tell you about their hometown. They take a lot of pride in showing off their hometown. They all speak great English and they will have plenty of time to answer your questions. And it's also good to know that we're taking uh, our guests in small groups. So it's not 50, 60, 70 people in one group and you know, you'll be herded through a European town. No, it's groups of 20, right? So you have, time, you have the time, you have the access to your guides to ask your questions. <clears throat> now, what's also wonderful is that these tours are geared to give you plenty of time. So you travel at your own pace, whether you want a tour like a local, whether you do not want to travel with the Viking group and want to branch off on your own and, and uh, explore on your own, you can do that. You have a lot of flexibility and freedom uh, to do your own thing on these tours, right? Nowadays with COVID, it might be a little bit more restricted than under normal circumstances, but we do know there will be a time after COVID and you know, these days will come back that we can just roam and go out there and experience and travel. Um, <clears throat> what's also great is that uh, oftentimes you can you can uh, get a, a gra grab a bike and do like a bike tour along the river or through a town. These are these are great options to have. And I mentioned initially already uh, the inclusiveness, right? And uh, what we pride ourselves a lot with is that we include a lot of things that you might be used to being charged, you know, in prior vacations. Uh, we have pretty much a very, very good idea what our guests want and need, and we include those things. Wine, beer, soft drinks with your meals are always included. Your daily shore excursion is always included. Your meals are included, and so many more things. Wi-Fi um, is also included because we want to stay in touch with friends and family we blog, right? We go on our social media and let fellow friends and family know what we're doing, where we are and what we ate for lunch today. So these things go a long way and there's plenty of spaces and areas to do that in peace and quiet on the ship. So even the ships are not as massive as ocean ships, you have plenty of room to kind of be for yourself if you wish to do so. Now, <clears throat> just to give you a little bit of an idea what kind of interests uh, we 
we suggest uh, to, to, uh, to feed and what kind of interests we see on those, on those vessels. I'm going to go into this in a, in a second. But if you've never been on a river cruise, I want to start with giving you a little bit of an advice, which are the most popular uh, cruises and what um, I would suggest would be a great starting point, right? This is again for, for guests that have done maybe ocean cruises, but never really went on the river before. The Rhine Getaway, hands down our most popular eight-day journey down the Rhine River. So when you see those Viking commercials with this beautiful ship coming along those castles, that's the Rhine getaway. Uh, you touch on four different countries, uh, the Netherlands, Germany, France, and Switzerland, and you even have opportunities to extend. So with each cruise that you do, you can make an eight-day cruise easily, a 10 or 12-day journey uh, with extensions in those cities. And again, this is a great question for your travel advisor at Bon Voyage to help you with that and to line this all up and coordinate with flights, right? Uh, the Grand European. For those guests that want to stay a little longer, 15 days, right? This is a great, great starting point or the Romantic Danube. These three are very, very popular journeys. Again, eight day, 15 day. We do have longer cruises. We don't really have shorter cruises. So eight, eight days, seven nights is really the shortest that Viking has. So I promised you some of the topics that, uh, you know, I would kind of suggest uh, looking, looking into a river cruise. Those are the wine lovers. I mean, we're literally sailing through some of the most amazing and well-renowned wine regions of the world, whether it's Portugal, the Rhine Valley, the Wachau Valley, it's all right on the on the rivers in France, uh, the the Gironde, the Dordogne, the Rhone, the Seine. Some of, of the most renowned wine areas are right, left, and right of the ship. So, uh, just to give you a couple of ideas, history enthusiasts, folks that want to learn about uh, the past, recent history, the last hundred years or two thousand years back, or even further. We visit archaeological sites. We visit World War One, versus, uh, World War Two uh, sites. The beaches of Normandy, the American cemetery. So there's lots of angles for for guests that are interested in in history, in learning about culture, art, music of the old world to take a river cruise and have a fantastic time. Um, uh, just want to give you a little bit of an idea what the highlights are. For example, on the Danube. So what we're looking at here is uh, our ship approaching the port of Budapest with the beautiful parliament building there in the back. It's a magnificent sailing. So we have two sailings on the Danube and uh, each one has its own charm. You're spending some time in Budapest in Vienna um, and uh, learn about the amazing food culture, wines, history, uh, music. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about Beethoven, we're talking about uh, Mozart uh, and, and Sch uh, uh, Schubert, right? Those kind, of, those kind of musical experience, we even have uh, concerts lined up for you in Vienna. Uh, no worries, the experience on Viking is always a very casual one. So no suits, no tuxedos are needed at any time. It's very casual. Uh, the only ones really dressing up are the musicians and the dancers. So. Um, Another great uh, river I mentioned already, the Rhine, with those amazing castles. There is, there is a stretch that is called the Middle Rhine. The Middle Rhine has about 28 castles that are lined up over a 40 mile stretch. And this is the perfect spot to just sit on the sun deck with a, with a beautiful glass of wine or a coffee or a tea, whichever suits you best to just take it all in. There will be live commentary. You hear about the history of these castles and uh, you know these areas that we're sailing through. So you get a great idea of, um, uh, of all the sites left and right of your vessel. On the Rhone, uh, on the Rhone and on the, the Seine, right? In France, we learn about ancient history. We learn about medieval times, uh, Viking history. I mean, the other Vikings, the ancient Vikings, uh, you know, history of the medieval times, Jean d'Arc. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, um, the Crusades and those kind of things, but also the amazing culinary world. I mean, this is this is really uh, France is putting its best foot forward with amazing cheeses, charcuteries, amazing dishes. We visit, uh, we, we learn how to cook in town. We we visit chefs along the way. This is absolutely fantastic way to 
satisfies so many flavors of interest along the way. And I talked already about a little bit um, when it came to consulting with your Bon Voyage travel advisor when it comes to advice on cabins. That is, um, that is where, where they can help you very, very well, you know, to find the perfect spot on the ship, whether you like to uh, go into a lavish suite or a stateroom of any level. That is a great, great spot to talk about, you know, to talk about your advisor. Um, these ships are elegant, they're understated. What's beautiful about them is anywhere on the ship, they're very, very much light filled, large windows. Uh, many of the cabins have sliding doors with verandas, with French balconies, and you're always surrounded by art, literature, history. There will be lectures on board. It is very relaxing. And you're traveling through Europe, even though you don't speak the language, it's all taken care of for you, right? Um, on board, of course, let me walk you through some of the areas. We are a cruise ship. There is a bar, full service bar, uh, dance floor, musician, local entertainment, with folkloric entertainment that will be provided every day um, here in the beautiful lounge. It's also your main gathering point. Uh, you have your, your high tea here in the afternoons your performances, your uh, cruise director will give their port talk here in this area as well. And unique with Viking is also this beautiful Aquavit terrace in the very front of the ship. This is where you can relax, unwind in the out, in the open. Uh, personally, I think this is the best spot to, uh, to spend the day and, uh, uh, or an afternoon of cruising or maybe enjoy a dinner as we're sailing into Budapest, it doesn't get better than that, right? So there is a little glass enclosure around uh, for safety, obviously, <laughs> this is necessary, but um, it is the best spot on board just to enjoy the scenery floating by. Uh, the staterooms itself, multiple stateroom categories are available on Viking, river ships from the standard cabins to the explorer suites and everything in between. Again, talk to your travel advisor, please, and ask him for their input and feedback. Dining is lavish, it's absolutely fantastic. And not only because I used to be a chef on board, I know what these gentlemen do there on board. They're fantastic at what they do. Freshly cooked meals, locally sourced. They take a lot of pride in their presentation. You will be amazed about the beauty of the food, the taste, the freshness, and the wine pairings. Let's not forget about that. So with that being said, I'm kind of moving on to ocean cruising already. I know time flies, time goes fast, but we have a lot to cover. So I want to touch on everything. Um, we have a lot of, uh, lot of images still to show here. We're talking about ocean cruising. And over the last, gosh, five years already, it's hard to believe we were voted number one cruise line by Travel and Leisure, recently even by Condé Nast. And we're very, very proud of that, to be honest. <clears throat> uh, now, what's really unique with Viking, I think this slide kind of pinpoints that very, very well. We're not trying to be everything to everyone, but we think um, the guests on board, we, we have figured out very well who is the traveler on Viking, right? Uh, our guests are not young families with, with, with children, right? So you actually have to be 18 years or older. Our guests are not sitting in a casino. While we all like to gamble here and there, but this is not something that the typical Viking cruiser does throughout their journey. Right? There will be casinos ashore side. If, if somebody wants to do that, by all means, you know, we'll, we'll point them out and we'll even get them there. Um, you see all the things that we don't do that really set us apart from others. We do not have any charges on Wi-Fi, on laundrettes. We do not have any charges on basic spa services. Uh, you will not be bothered to, with, with art auctions or with, with any sales pressure of any kind. Right? I think this goes a long way. And, and again, Besides all the points that I have here, the fact that we do not nickel and dime really sets Viking apart from the rest of the industry. Um, very, very different approach to cruising, right? Uh, when we talk about the, the feel on board, the design on board, it was very important to us to create spacious, light-filled areas that are contemporary, that are modern, that are filled with art, culture, and literature, all around their open spaces that invite to, to converse with, with people you might have not known two hours before, right? And to make new friends, to spend time with friends that travel with you. Uh, and this ship is really, or these ships, because there's six already of those, they invite 
to do just that. Here, this is the center of the ship, the beautiful atrium with this gorgeous staircase and this huge digital screen where we show local photography and art from around the world, uh, surrounded by music throughout the day and the evening, maybe performances here, but it's never the party bands, it's never the animators. It's very classy, uh, you know, sophisticated entertainment. Might be a flamenco guitar in, in, uh, when we, when we uh, sail around Spain, or it might be uh, a flamenco, flamenco uh, performance of, of local dancers. Um, those kind of uh, performances you will you will see on Viking. We might go as as wild as having uh, a Redback revival band performing here up in the evenings or show movies under the stars, but it's never animators or contests or those kind of things. You will not have those on Viking. And again, no kids under eighteen. So, with that being said. The state rooms here, the same philosophy that we had on rivers, right? They're your sanctuary on board, your, your home away from home. They have all the, the comfort that you can think of, heated bathroom floors, beautiful shower cabins, um, you know, lavish space all around. And you can see this is a typical cabin here on Viking, plenty of room, uh, even a beautiful vanity here in your working desk, uh, you know, is, is built in suites. Uh, this, is a, this is a junior suite, that uh, Penthouse Junior. It's a little bit larger, so you have a living space and a uh, bedroom space here in, uh, before you get to your, to your veranda. But this is just a, a little design example of what the cabins look like. Very contemporary and again, open and airy. And you have this beautiful veranda to step outside. By the way, when we talk about verandas, Every single cabin on Viking Oceans has a veranda. Let me say this again. There is no, no, uh, no inside cabins. There's no ocean view cabins. Every cabin from the, from the veranda cabin starting, that's the, the entry level category is called veranda cabin because every cabin has a veranda, has its own view. Absolutely fantastic. Now, I can vouch for this next uh, for this next one. That is that we have fantastic dime, dining on board. And what the best part about this is, it is all included. You do not pay for any food on board anywhere. Whether it is a beautiful uh, porterhouse steak at Manfredi's, or it is an amazing eight course meal paired with with beverages at the chef's table dining room, all of that is one hundred percent included. Even your your 24 seven um, uh, room service, room service also included. Now, during the times of COVID, we even, you can even during the meal hours, order from any restaurant on the ship and your room attendant will bring it to your cabin. Again, completely included. So all of these great restaurants, like I said, include, and there's so much more to talk about. Again, I cannot emphasize it enough. If you, I hope we get a lot of questions uh, today uh, to, to go into details. But if you have any follow-up questions, please contact your Bon Voyage Travel Advisor. Now, very new, and I want to say as new as 2020, we, we just recently talked about the launch of our Mississippi fleet. I can, I can say that it's not only one ship. There will be more than one. But the first one will actually start sailing in early 2022. And from the get-go, when we talked, when we started talking about those last year, when the world pretty much shut down, Viking opened, uh, opened up a new ship. So it, it seems like we're doing things a little backwards, but I can tell you the interest and the excitement uh, was absolutely fantastic. People, uh, people really booked, booked this product up. Uh, 2022, 23 uh, are available already. Even 2024, if you want to look a little further ahead. And what this, what this, what these journeys are, uh, you see that here. There's pretty much five different segments that you can do in that first sailing season, from uh, you know those eight days in the south to the 15 days the whole river, or uh, in the high summer when when it gets a little warmer uh, there in the north between St. Paul and St. Louis, we do uh, America's Heartland as well, this eight day journey. So kind of determined by the, by the season, um, this is the first sailing season. There will be much more coming online very soon. Uh, so please secure your cabin. If that was always on your to-do list, um, why not looking into a 
modern contemporary beautiful viking ship you know we have a great name recognition all the fine things that you hear uh, online or from your neighbors from your friends that sailed on viking you will be able to find here on the beautiful mississippi and some more because the ship is significantly larger than your river ships in europe right you have a five deck ship versus a three deck ship it is not a paddle wheeler so a very contemporary ship here you see the beautiful Viking Mississippi in St. St. Louis. Um, just some design images from the ship already. She's being assembled right now. She's almost completed down in New Orleans. And we can't wait to see her actually up close and in reality. But this is what it's going to look like. Some amazing local cuisine served here. Barbecue up and down the, the Mississippi River. Uh, the different recipes. I mean, it's going to be comfort food, the food of the heartland. Um, beautiful aquavit terrace and the amazing viking service all around here you see the front of the ship with this beautiful loungy area uh, it has a lot of design elements from viking oceans with some amazing cabin categories again starts with a 200 275 square foot cabin doesn't mean much but this is way ahead of the river standard anywhere in the world it is a fantastic uh, size cabin and then from there it goes even up now that is a, a little teaser on viking mississippi now i know there was a little interest already about uh the fourth uh, segment of of our presentation today and that of course is uh expedition cruising so expedition cruising also announced in 2020 um we launch next spring uh, we'll launch two vessels. So the first one will launch in the spring, the second one a little bit later. The beautiful Octantis and Polaris. These are new builds built after our specifications, after our plans. And we really wanted to do something very new, something that hasn't been there before uh, to gain access to areas that are remote, but do that in, in the luxury that Viking travelers are used to. So getting in these remote areas, but with all the luxury features that you are used to on Viking. And then of course, we're bringing a lot of expedition equipment with us uh, that will help us to really explore the wildlife, the flora, the fauna, learn about the Arctic, the Antarctic, right? These will be the first two areas of the world where we sail to. Um, and uh, when I say the expedition equipment, uh, here you see some of the uh, some of the things that will come with us: zodiacs, of course, ribs, uh, kayaks that you can either operate by foot to have your hands feet hands free for binoculars and uh, cameras, and of course also two submarines. So these are operated uh, by a pilot, so it holds six passengers and a pilot. Uh, and the greatest news for those is all included. You do not pay for any of those, right? So. Um, what's also wonderful, and I think I even impressed Ryan, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the actual slide for that. What, what impressed Ryan was, I remember him saying that uh, the fact that we're boarding these crafts inside our ship, so our hangar is actually located inside the ship, so it's safely boarding the equipment, strapping everybody down until they're secure, and then slowly, gently sliding into the water. That is unique. That is very new to the industry. It's never been there before. In the, uh, you know, up to, up to these Viking ships, it was always like you board the equipment on the side of the of the vessel so there's a little bit of motion of the ocean but none of this on viking inside the ship safely securely and then slowly lowered into the sea so that really opens up this type of vacation this type of adventure to a whole new group of of clients of new guests right now not enough that we're going into the Arctic and Antarctic. Also, we built these ships with the purpose, for the purpose of going into the Great Lakes as well. So with that being said, these ships are narrow enough to sail through the Welland Canal into uh, Ontario, into the Great Lakes, and from there we'll navigate the Great Lakes between Canada and the United States, which is absolutely amazing. Nothing of that magnitude has been done before. There is nothing even comparable out there in this type of luxury, in this type of cruising approach that Viking brings to the area. And uh, we, we saw a vast interest of this already. So I know that uh, many, many uh, clients have booked 
our uh, Great Lakes journeys through Bon Voyage Travel. Uh, and I've worked with many of the advisors. It's been a fantastic success story. They know the product very well by now. Uh, and um, just to give you some ideas what we're looking at, right? This is a 13 day journey, Canadian discovery between New York to Toronto. One of the first sailings that we do, um, Niagara and Great Lakes from Toronto to Milwaukee. <coughs> uh, the Great Lake Explorer between Milwaukee to Thunder Bay. Now these journeys are the first of many to come, right? There will be much more uh, of these journeys coming up. They might be altered all throughout the seasons as we move forward, but these are the ones for 2022 Great Lakes Explorers from Milwaukee to Thunder Bay. And last but not least, undiscovered Great Lakes from Thunder Bay to Milwaukee. Some, some amazing stops here along the way. Uh, Apostle Islands, right? Um, you know, all, all these amazing Point Pelé for the, for the bird watchers. Uh, some absolutely incredible wildlife that can be seen between Canada and the United States there. Great cities, Toronto, uh, Detroit, uh, you know, so many amazing small town America, large metropolitan cities, great history all around. So this was exactly the reason why Viking is coming to the Great Lakes. With that being said, um, I would like to go a little bit in detail um, because we do have to talk about, uh, about the pandemic and those kind of things. Uh, and I wanna address a couple of things. I'm sure you have questions and, and I look forward to answering all of them. But uh, when, when the pandemic came around, we, we pretty much noticed we need help. We need professional advice from, from people who know what they're doing. And help came to Viking uh, in the persona of Dr. Bono. Dr. Rachel Bono is a retired vice admiral of the Medical Naval Corps. Uh, her resume reads fantastic. So she retired. Uh, she used to be in and out of the White House as a medical advisor, uh, but uh, she is now a Viking and she came up, she designed and created the Viking Health Protocol, which really helped us as one of the first cruise lines to return to travel, return to sailing. And a lot of things are firsts, right? First cruise line to have a full PCR testing laboratory on board. First cruise line to have um, UVC filters for every cabin in the, in the, on the ship to have filtered uh, purified air in every single cabin individually. First cruise line has UVC robots going through the ship to flood public areas with UVC light to eliminate all pathogens. I mean, there has so many firsts, too many to go into detail, uh, but um, daily testing really allows us to uh, make sure that everybody is safe on board, right? And remain safe on board since we're going out every day. If we have a day uh, at sea, no need to test, but after every landfall, it's very easy to test, which also allows you then, uh, because you have to have those test certificates to return to go to, to the airport, you will get a printout on the ship, very easy and uncomplicated. Um, we have updated medical facilities. You know, We spend a lot of uh, time and money on updating facilities to make sure that people are safe on board, travelers are safe. Too many details to, to notice, but uh, just as for the testing, it's not that nasty nose swab. It is a saliva test, very discreetly done in your cabin and your room attendant will pick up the samples every day and you get you have the, the certainty that everybody on board will be tested, including the crew, right? Because it's, uh, you know, it goes both ways. We got to protect our passengers and our crew uh, to make sure everyone is safe. We have responsibilities to many. Now, um, one thing I can already tell you, in order to sail on Viking for the time being, you have to be vaccinated, right? That is a requirement. You have to be vaccinated. There's really no way around it. Uh, so I just want to put that out there up front. Um, but um, I think it is one of the safest places to be to sail on a Viking ship these days, uh, because who of us can tell that we're getting tested daily almost, right? That is, that is very unique. And with that being said, um, Riking, do you, uh, uh, Ryan, do you want to spread the good news on, on the offer that we're having? 
Yeah, I sure can. Uh, if you are interested in a Viking cruise, and how could you not? Uh, after hearing all the, the great stuff, and there's so much more to dive into with our advisors that uh, Reiner just kind of wet your whistle here. If you book with Bon Voyage Travel uh, over the next couple of weeks, so essentially through the end of the month, we have a fantastic show offer. You'll get $100 shipboard credit uh, per cabin booking just for booking uh, with us. That's not something you can get if you book directly with Viking. Uh, so I want to make sure that you talk to your travel advisor. If you don't have a travel advisor, uh, pop in the Q&A and, uh, and let us know that you don't have a Bon Voyage advisor and you want to talk to one of our experts who knows Viking exceptionally well. So we are glad to be able to offer this uh, to all of the participants on the, the webinar today. So uh, Reiner, is that is that all you had for today? Because I have some questions. <laughs> that is all I have. So I left some time at the end so we can address those questions. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, I will piggyback if, if we can go, which is kind of a, a significant topic, back to the, the COVID protocols. I'd like to highlight a couple things and, and maybe ask a few other questions to, for clarification. Just to remind our listeners uh, and viewers here is that vaccination is required, 100%, no way around that. So that is, as Reiner mentioned, for the foreseeable future. Uh, that's essentially every cruise line is operating in that fashion globally. You're not going to find one that is a, a reputable one that we support that's going to allow anything less than that from a, a, a requirement to gain access to the ship. One thing that is unique, and Reiner did mention this, is daily testing. Uh, not only was Viking pioneering in regards to on-ship testing facilities, uh, it pioneered the concept as well of daily testing, and many cruise lines are not doing that uh, and not going to that degree. So uh, I know one of our viewers asked, how can I feel safe on board? Um, where in your hometown can you go where not only you know every single person is vaccinated, crew alike, right? This isn't just passengers, crew alike, and on a Viking cruise, every single person you're around has been tested and has been uh, has a negative test that day, not just when they left home, not just before they go back to the United States, right? So that's something to, to keep in mind. Some of our viewers, Reiner were, ask, Reiner, were asking, I'm off ship. What's the masking uh, requirements? How does, that, how does that work? Or depending on the destination I'm in, and I think I know the answer, but I'll let you uh, answer that. It is really coming down to the destination. Some ports are very rigorous, right? Uh, and I'm just picking some out of the air. For example, Iceland is very, very adamant about wearing masks in the destination. Other countries, uh, I'm thinking some of the Caribbean islands, they're very, very open to, uh, if you're on a walk, strolling through the town, uh, keeping your distance, there is no requirements whatsoever. Um, we do for now, when we, when we talk about going into museums or enclosed areas, of course, we're going to wear our masks. You know, we're, we cannot guarantee a distance of more than six feet. So we're, we're wear our masks in those. But as soon as we're outside, the mask can come off. And even on board, uh, if you're on the sun deck, you, you take them off. If you're, you know, moving around in the ship and there's other people around, please keep them on. But as soon as you sit down at your table, at the bar, in the dining venue, in the entertainment venue, of course you take them off, absolutely. I know you, uh, you answered this or at least touched on it that uh, Viking des uh, departures now are not sailing at 100% capacity. Uh, do you anticipate a reduced capacity into 2022? I do. I do. Now, this is uh, me, me guessing. I know that we are, we are um, not selling, uh, we're not selling the full ship, we're leaving capacity available. Um, but this will be the practice for the time being um, into 2022. Also comes down which area I, I foresee that we are not selling full capacity for a little for a little while longer. We did have a specific question about Norway, and that kind of leads into some other destinations that at present may not be allowing uh, foreign nationals or visitors to their country. Uh, do you have any insight? And I know you probably don't have anything specific to that sailing. It would be just keep an eye on it. But to that end, what should somebody, if they're booked on a cruise in February, let's say, as one of our listeners is uh, in February headed to Norway, or there's another destination that right now is on a do not travel uh, you know, restriction by that government? Now, <clears throat> we have been 
I honestly look at the last year and a half. Uh, we have been, uh, we had to unfortunately cancel numerous cruises. Uh, but one thing that that always has been a, a great practice, and, and you can probably back me up on that, that no guest has lost any of their money. We were able to offer vouchers. We were able to offer uh, to return funds if people were not were not were not sure about sailing uh, ever again or in the foreseeable future. So the offers were always geared to make things right for the client because it's not their fault. It's, it, it is the, the sign of the time. Um, added value vouchers to move your sale date into the future. Matter of fact, for this month, we still have the risk-free guarantee. You know, uh, November, December risk-free guarantee booking with these allows you to move your sale date two years out, right? And, and you can decide up to two weeks prior to, to your sale date and then make the decision. It, it, it really takes that guessing game off your table to decide, yes, I'm booking into the risk-free and then comes the time I don't feel comfortable, you just move your sale date out into the future when you feel, when you feel more safe. Excellent. And I know there's a lot of demand uh, for all of your products. Uh, it would say, be safe to say that any reduced deposits or anything like that, because of the demand and the number of people trying to get on a Viking ship, reduced deposits are probably not something we'll, we'll really ever see. Not in the foreseeable future. I can tell you, we talked a little bit before the webinar, you know, we're looking into almost sold out 2022. There are some exceptions, some sailings that are still available, but uh, the, the pandemic has really uh, created a hunger to go out there. People are ready to travel again and want to travel. And it, the, the, biggest, the, biggest, the biggest problem we have is to, to provide enough inventory, to provide enough cabins to, to fill them. Now, I do want uh, your clients to book them, <laughs> you know, but uh, it, it is really 2022. We're looking almost more into 2023 for available cabin space. Um, I do not know, I do not foresee any de reduced deposits or any changes in the deposit uh, side of the, of the uh, booking. You bet. Uh, we had somebody mention, and I know on your ocean ships, you have a fitness center. What are my workout op options, uh, maybe on river? Uh, and and what <clears throat> can I expect in that fitness center on the ocean vessels? That is a great question. No, I, I like to work out as well. On the ocean, I can tell you, state of the art is a fantastic fitness center. So this is not just some free weights facing the facing the beautiful window front. These are free weights, ellipticals, rowing machines, running belts. Uh, there is uh, striders, bikes, literally everything you can possibly break a sweat, you will find in that, in that, in that uh, workout facility. Now, for the time being, we even allocated a team member who is permanently spending time in that in that workout facility who after every time somebody uses equipment they wipe it down first disinfect it before the next person can go on this machine on this on this equipment to continue workout um, that is for oceans um, there's also limit limited capacity it's not that people line up in front of the gym to begin with but uh, I mean the facility is quite quite substantial you know and and I'm thinking back before COVID, I think you could easily work out with 35, 40 people without stepping on each other's toes. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was plenty of space in there. Uh, but I think that's, that's limited at this time um, to, a, to a smaller number. On rivers, uh, now keep in mind, we're always in port, right? So if somebody wants to work out, running is always an option, right? There's always a beautiful shoreline. There's always, a, you know, running tracks along the river. Uh, we offer bike rides. We offer canoe adventures, kayak adventures. So the opportunity to be physically active is given. We know the clientele is getting younger, uh, wants to be more active. There's the, the Nordic walking sticks to get into the vineyards and, and all of those wonderful things. But there's always workout facilities nearby. Our onboard staff will assist with finding these facilities and get you into a full-size gym nearby the ship and even get you to and from. Uh, that, that has never been an issue. That's a great answer because the river experience is about being in port as much as possible. There's no sea days, 
on a river cruise. <laughs> so we want you off ship. Viking wants you experiencing the destination. It's all about the destination uh, on the river. Uh, and so there's no sea days there. And obviously in the, on the expedition product, uh, there's opportunities uh, to be off ship and act physically active as well. Um, take me on back to the river. We're on a river ship and uh, what's my stateroom? I know you showed some uh, some staterooms. Do all staterooms have verandas? Do they have windows? How do uh, balconies <coughs> work for, for, and I know that's a loaded question because you have <laughs> multiple rivers and different size ships. Absolutely, and that's a great question. Uh, I mentioned that there is different size cabins, different layouts for every different flavor. From our standard cabins that have a window that spans uh, in the upper part of the wall from one side to another, that window cannot be opened, right? It's a, it's a window, you know, probably at chest level and up, um, allows you to look out into the river, uh, above the river. Uh, but keep in mind, it is about, the water levels is about three to four feet below that, be, below the rim of the river, uh, of the windowsill. So these are the main deck cabins going one level up into the uh, C and D uh, category cabins where you have your French balconies sliding doors uh, that will open to a rail. So you can lean out, you can open that sliding door, kind of like your patio door that slides open. So allows you to, to get you know, the beautiful view. Uh, verandas, veranda cabins and veranda suites will feature a full-size veranda where you can step outside, have chairs, table out there. Uh, to enjoy the scenery and the privacy of your veranda. Um, and then of course your Explorer suites, your double A suites, they have both. They have, uh, the, the Explorer suite actually has a fantastic veranda where you can wrap, wrap, that wraps around the entire cabin where you can step outside, have a 210 degree view. There's only two of those to each vessel. Um, these are in the very back of the ship, located in the back of the ship. They are actually have a secluded kind of an entrance to their cabins as well, uh, but they're very, very spacious, very nicely laid out. And then your, your double A veranda cabins, they have a living room, bedroom. By the way, suites always have living room and separated bedroom. Uh, so in the, in the bedroom, you have a French balcony. In the living room, you have access to your veranda. So as we when we talk to people about river cruising, we always like to, to mention that keep in mind just everything is slightly smaller, right? You're yes. dealing with, <laughs> with not uh, not 950 passengers. You're dealing with 180 passengers, right? 190. So everything is a little bit smaller. However, if you want that space, the Explorer Suite is a great option for you to get more of a traditional sized veranda and have that additional space. So those are available, but as you mentioned, only two on ship, so they go fast. Uh, if my travel party includes a, a third person and I'm looking for triple accommodations, uh, maybe touch on probably not on the river, uh, but is there triple accommodations on the ocean product? There is unfortunately not. The products on Viking are always laid out for double occupancy. So we do not have any single cabin. So if somebody would like to book a cabin as a single traveler, that would be a single supplement. Uh, you buy the cabin, right? Uh, there is no triples, no quadruples, no connecting doors. It is really uh, four laid out for couples to, to book, you know, two people for a cabin. There's, there's also no way around of having somebody sleep in the Explorer Suite on the couch. We had those questions. <laughs> we, can't, we can't unfortunately do that. Uh, the space would be there, but there's some regulations on the river that will prevent us from allowing that. Excellent. Thank you. That's uh, good feedback. And, and one thing I do love about Viking, you are consistent and you know who you are and you know who you are not. And that's that's just fine. If I'm a, uh, you talk about the food side of things and it sounds like you've got options for every style and type of, of person and, and favorites. So somebody that wants to eat very heavy, their steakhouses and things like that. But if I'm somebody who wants to eat very light, uh, it sounds like the menus and the different dining venues on ocean, you got a number of restaurants to choose from. But even on the river, uh, you do offer a, a varied menu options. Can you maybe touch on as the chef in the room, uh, maybe <laughs> talk a little more in, uh, in depth about the, the cuisine? Ryan, the, the culinary program on the rivers has come such a long way. Just in the last 10 years alone, what we are able to do 
you know, just the technology in the back of the house just has come as far as in front of the house with all the GPS and the, the infotainment system in the cabins. There has a lot of movement been behind the scenes as well. And we're, we're able to, to make fantastic, to offer fantastic options for our, for our guests on the culinary side as well. I mean, over the years, uh, we, we, we received a lot of requests, especially when it comes to diets, you know, or food allergies. You, you can address that nowadays much easier, much faster. You, you bake your own gluten-free bread on board. You know, you, you can pretty much address and cook every uh, food allergy or food sensitivity on board. This is possible on rivers, on oceans. We've been doing it very successful. Also, uh, again, here comes, here comes a, a, a great a point that leads me to pointing out that talk to your travel advisor already. If you know, hey, I can have shellfish or I have a garlic allergy. Let us put this in the cruise manifest so we know we can communicate that to our chef on board and they will meet with you discreetly in the bar and discuss your food. And so you have the the, the same great experience, whichever allergy you have, you will have the same great food experience. It will be delivered by the chef. So they will make sure that you're not getting the wrong plate. You know, he will, he will cook that meal specifically for you and, and check in throughout your journey to make sure that you're happy with, with what we're, what we're providing. So on, Remember, on the ocean, on the ocean side, of course, much easier since we have much more space. And, and you pointed it out, the variety of food on the oceans is just, it's just incredible. Um, you know, in, in all of those different restaurants, yes, that is one thing, but even there from, from lunch to dinner, to tea time, to a late night snack, there's food everywhere. And it's, it's absolutely <laughs> beautifully presented. The biggest issue that I have is, uh, I'm always gaining five, 10 pounds, you know, in, 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 even though I know, Hey, hold back, you know, you know, what's happening, even though you're going on to these excursions, but it's just a, it's just a, a fact of life that you tend to gain some pounds when you go on a cruise. Right. So. Yeah. I remember uh, sailing uh, and <laughs> with Tor, uh, the Vikings president, we were in Budapest and we were talking and one of the people at the table said, well, you know, tell me more about your specialty dining restaurants." And he cautioned everybody at the table said, there aren't specialty dining restaurants in a main dining room. And that's what most cruise lines talk to. He said, every restaurant facility is special. Uh, we don't have an upcharge and you mentioned that. So I always wanna reiterate that it doesn't cost you more to dine in a named restaurant. There isn't a main dining room that serves main dining room food. And he said, the reason for that is we have special in every dish in every dining facility. And so I thought that was something to point out that is unique to Viking uh, and not, not some of the other cruise lines. Um, I also wanted to point out, and you nailed it, you're right on the expedition product. Uh, something that we talk to our clients about, a lot of people have heard the word expedition and they liken that to, oh my goodness, I have to be exceptionally physically fit. I have to be able to climb uh, or I can't go on an expedition experience, a cruise or a land vacation. And nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, you have varied levels of physical fitness activities if people want to choose something very uh, active uh, or more soft adventure. But bottom line physical fitness levels, essentially of all abilities. And, and why I say that is the hanger. You mentioned that, and I, I'm infatuated with this. And most of us can tie into riding Pirates of the Caribbean on Disneyland. And if you can get on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland and get off, you can go on an expedition cruise on Viking because that is how you will get on and off most, if not all of the vessels, the ones that would be, you know, the submersible is going to be a little unique there, but most expedition cruises, you're docking on the side of the ship. You're, you're, you're getting onto that vessel on the side. And as you mentioned, Reiner, sometimes a little bit precarious, sometimes a little bit where uh, you have to make sure that you've got the great arm connection with one of the crew members, but the way the vessel sets up with the hangar underneath the ship and in a controlled weather controlled environment, I think was ingenious and allows for much more people to experience the expedition product. So thank you for bringing that up. 
I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> also, the return of those vessels of those crafts is exactly the same way. So those ribs are approaching the ship in the back, are being hooked up and pulled into the hangar. After the craft is secured, you then unbuckle and get out on the other side of the ship uh, so that the next turn of passengers can approach uh, this craft. So it is really revolutionary. I'm, I, I was very impressed. My mouth was standing open when I saw it the first time. I was like, this is, this is fantastic. This, this alone is absolutely incredible. Um, as for the submarines, they are lifted by a crane when everybody's securely fastened in there. And then the crane will gently put that craft into the water. These go down to up to 900 feet, but there is so much incredible uh, underwater, underwater uh, wildlife to experience as we know, penguins, seals, and those kind of creatures that spend most of their time in the water. Uh, so you just see them, you don't just see them lounging on the ice, you see them underwater uh, performing. It is absolutely incredible. I, I can't wait to see it with my own eyes. So I'm, I'm waiting for the invite. <laughs> you bet. Uh, this, this will definitely come off. Uh, and I will say this, we're mindful of everybody's time. We'd like to complete our webinar here at the top of the hour, just so that everybody has a chance to get on with their day. But last call for questions or comments. So jump on that Q&A button, uh, push the chat feature and ask that question so that we can get it in here. But right before we finish here, Reiner, I want to just remind everybody of the show offer. $100 shipboard credit for every cabin that you book between tomorrow, essentially. We'll get you in today if you call your advisor and book that cabin today between uh, now and the end of the month. So get that space in. And I would encourage you and, and Reiner, you can add your two cents, which you already did. Viking is uh, in very much in demand. Cruising is in demand. So if you have something to open up the most flexibility for yourself, uh, the best pricing, the best promotional opportunity, this is going to come off pretty salesy, but it's actually very accurately depicted book now. Uh, and you mentioned it. There is really no space on the Mississippi River in 2022. So you, if you have any inkling of wanting to go on the Mississippi River 2023, you better call today. Like that's got to happen today. Uh, even Viking Ocean's product, uh, 2022 is very minimal. There's a few sailings that have more cabins, but it really is uh, because of COVID. So many people have booked further out. So many people that were displaced planned to sail in 2020, planned to sail in 2021. And just as you mentioned, uh, Vikings terms and conditions and policies have been extremely flexible for the consumer to be able to move their bookings, to be able to take the money and put it into in a holding account, a future travel credit, a voucher to be able to say, well, I don't know what I want to do today, but I will do something uh, in the future. There, You don't have to pick that sailing right away if you choose to, to cancel your voyage or if unfortunately that voyage gets canceled because of things outside of Vikings control, uh, exceptionally consumer friendly, but because of all those moving bookings, there's not a ton of space uh, in 2022. So get that now. Anything else to add, Reiner, on that? You know, a, a great value that I always see is uh, look at the look at the flexible air as well. You know, oftentimes we have some amazing air offers especially when it comes to the rivers, uh, uh, oftentimes $299, $399 round trip, you don't find that. that. That's incredible value. So talk to your travel advisor, they find those deals for you. And uh, these, that alone, you know, if you can save, you can save uh, a, a couple of thousand dollars in air alone, that, that makes it worthwhile, right? To, to That's right. go That's now. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would I'd encourage anybody, if you're on this uh, webinar and you've never been on a river cruise, uh, and you might say, where, what should I do? Where, where should I sail first? The Rhine or the Danube? You cannot go wrong, but that would be your first experience that I would recommend. I know you would as well, Reiner. Uh, yes. and you could get on the Rhine or the Danube in 2022. There's definitely yes. some space available to do that. Uh, I've uh, Why I have the picture in the background, that's the Danube, is because I love, love, love that experience of Vienna and Budapest and, and, and all the great sights and sounds and schnitzel on that, uh, on that vessel that I definitely partook in. But uh, Reiner Marks, we just want to thank you for a fantastic presentation. You, you got us excited, but as you said, uh, there's so much more to understand about which 
trip is best for you. And that's why you want to talk to a Bon Voyage travel advisor. So I'd encourage you to get connected to your advisor now. And thanks again, Reiner, for joining us. And my we'll pleasure. And you on a Viking vessel soon. Sounds good. My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great afternoon.